Welcome back to TMZ Sports. I'm Mike Babcock, and it is time to run and gun with Renee Montgomery. Don't matter where we are, Renee, we're going to run and gun. Don't matter. East Coast, West Coast, Midwest, does not matter. <laughs> Let's start with the king. Where else will we start? LeBron James. Now, LeBron is usually playing in these games, so it's a little odd to see him sitting courtside and not in his Lakers uniform, winning NBA championships. But uh, LeBron just a spectator this year and was sitting courtside, Renee. Game five, NBA Finals, Bucks, Suns. They were tied at two games apiece. Obviously, the Bucks won game five. Well, LeBron not only sitting courtside, but had his Lobo 1707. It's a very high-end tequila right there with him. So if he needed a drink, he could just have a little sip as he enjoyed the basketball game. Look, Renee, that, that's your buddy, Bron. What do you think about this? Because I, I think it's awesome. Listen, I mean, we've seen this before. <laughs> LeBron, when he was going to date night, didn't he have yeah. his Lobos out there? But you think about the deal that Conor McGregor just made with his whiskey. Yes. And I think a lot of people are excited about going into alcoholic endeavors, yes. liquor endeavors. And so he's what what better person to promote it than himself? And then right. to do it at the finals he knows all eyes are going to be on him. And then he actually tweeted, somebody posted, wow, they let LeBron bring his uh, Lobo 1707 in there. And he's like, they let me. So yeah. he's like, look, you do what you want when you're the king. That's basically what that means. Yeah, who's stopping LeBron? <laughs> and by the way, talk about a good week for LeBron. He has uh, the Space Jam sequel comes out. Monster movie. Everyone talking about the movies. Cordside with te uh, tequila. And, and by the way. million in the opening day. Right. I believe, so. Huge. Still during a pandemic, still killing it with the numbers. And, and I think that was a great point about Conor McGregor. And what did Conor do with his uh, with his whiskey? He promoted it at every opportunity that every he got. Time. Right. And LeBron's doing that. And LeBron is going to make not that he needs it, but LeBron is going to make a ton of money on the tequila and good for him. Uh, OK, moving on. I, I know uh, we were just talking about this a little bit during the break today. Last week, we told people about this Khabib Nurmagomedov super fan. There was a, and, and not just any fan, because Khabib has a lot of fans, but there was a 66-year-old woman. Her name is Nelly Gonzalez. And Nelly Gonzalez was actually hanging out in the 100-plus degree weather outside of the uh, the UFC Apex Center, one of the really nice uh, buildings that the UFC has in Las Vegas. Really hot, waiting outside with her sign that uh, was uh, basically asking Khabib to take a picture with her. Well, Dana White saw this, arranged for this woman, for Nelly, to have a meeting with Khabib. Now, if that wasn't cool enough, over the weekend, the UFC had a big fight, Misha Tate, comeback fight, after five years away from the octagon. Well, Nelly Gonzalez was in the building, octagon side, and Renee, they showed this uh, beautiful woman on television. So how about that for having- Nelly, been, right? you <laughs> better live your best life, Nelly. I love that Dana White and them did that. That's the yes. thing that about what Dana White does. He, he gets those moments. He capitalizes yeah. on all those moments. I mean, yeah. you have an older woman- Standing outside in the heat shouldn't happen anyway. Nope. So I love that she was able to get the photo. She's a real fan. So I always love showing love to fans. Yes. This is like, I love these kind of stories. Right. And it's it's not the typical, uh, that's not the, the demographic you would think for a, a UFC fan, but right. that's awesome. And I know Dana Dana's intentions were pure, but in the end, he looks like the coolest guy. Khabib looks like a great guy. So it's a, it's a huge win for the UFC from a publicity standpoint. And most importantly, the, uh, Nelly, she probably had the time of her life, and that's awesome. <laughs> uh, so moving on to our third running gun topic, uh, somebody who has been in the news a lot lately. We've been, you know, been a lot of debate about her mental health and whether or not she should be playing tennis or not playing tennis. Well, Naomi Osaka, Renee, was announced as one of three people who are actually going to be on the cover of the uh, highly anticipated Sports Illustrated swimsuit issue, and their Naomi Osaka is looking absolutely gorgeous, and um, that, that's a pretty cool honor to get the to get to be on the cover of the SI swimsuit issue. Yeah, and you talked about having a dope week. Well, her um, documentary came out. I just watched it yesterday. I binged oh, cool. all three uh, episodes. Her is self titled Naomi Osaka, so that's. I mean, it's it's amazing to see what she's doing. Uh, Meg The Stallion, the first female rapper to ever cover Sports Illustrated yes. swimsuit edition. She was one of them as well. So it's pretty cool to just see how culture is shifting. Before yep. you used to only see models, supermodels yes. on, the, on the cover of Sports Illustrated Swimsuit Edition. 
Now we see female rappers, we right. see tennis players, different people. So. Right. There's, there's even a, a transgender activist and uh, a, a model as well. So you're right. This is uh, all different types of people from all different walks of life. And I, I think it's awesome. I, I think uh, obviously uh, that you're with me there, but, but, but this is great. Look at Meg killing it on the cover. This is awesome. Welcome back to TMZ Sports, Mike and Renee in the house. And it was a huge weekend for a big time UFC fighter, Billy Quarantillo, Renee. Not only did he go and get a big time win over uh, Gabriel Benitez, another dude who was a really good fighter at UFC Fight Night over the weekend, but he has his honeymoon coming up next week. So he actually wow. stepped... This is kind of crazy to me, Renee. He steps into a cage knowing that he has to go and take pictures with his wife and you you can't get beat up then you've got to go in that no. fight. Gonna, right <laughs> or you're gonna have a very angry wife at home so billy q goes gets the win and uh, in a couple of days we'll be uh shooting off to his honeymoon and we talked to billy and we asked him about this whole crazy situation and this is what billy had to say what's the plans for the honeymoon so we're going uh not this wednesday but next wednesday thank god i have a, a week to like heal and everything because i'm you know just banged up just normal wear and tear uh next wednesday we're going to the u.s virgin islands for uh, about 10 days and uh we're, it's just gonna be a great time to relax chill uh maybe maybe try to you know get a, get our family to grow a little bit maybe try to have a little baby so the honeymoon might be plans to make a, a little mm-hmm. billy q correct yeah a little little billy jr yeah yeah we're definitely at that point you know we've lived together for for years and we're obviously married now it, it's something we've both wanted to do so if i i think i'm ready I, I i know she's ready i think i'm ready and uh yeah that's that's the game plan billy thank you so much for doing this good luck mo- moving forward and uh good luck i guess on the honeymoon <laughs> <laughs> good, luck, good luck good luck out there kid uh thanks man i'll see you guys back in november and uh i'll have a good time on that honeymoon if you know what i mean oh wow <laughs> wow is <was> right Renee. <laughs> <laughs> no but i mean at least he said he gave himself a week but that that is some confidence in yourself right there to just be like all right i'm gonna fight a whole fight and then i'm just gonna go take photos and you know, that actually is a good concept, though. After every fight, he should go. Every fighter should go on a vacation after that yeah. because the training for boxing, as we all know, is just like it's the hardest training. Yeah. Every athlete knows that. So they deserve a little vacation. I, I know. Or I was even thinking, what if what if he, God forbid, had a really serious injury like a Conor McGregor injury and they had to cancel the whole trip? Oh my but gosh. he got through the fight okay. He dominated in the fight. By the way, I wonder if he was thinking about his wife during the fight. Like, I need to win this fight. Um, so Billy Q gets the win, now goes on the honeymoon. He deserves it. Congratulations. All right, moving on to the man who uh, led the Milwaukee Bucks to the championship without a doubt if, if Giannis, if the Greek freak was uh, was not uh, on the Bucks and didn't have one of the greatest series that we have ever seen in finals history, the Bucks win no, no championship, certainly not in six games, Renee. Uh, so, yeah, you might ask yourself, if you're Giannis, if you're the finals MVP, if you have won two MVPs, if you're a defensive player there, if, if you are one of the greatest players to have ever lived, what do you do the morning after you win an NBA championship? Renee, the answer is you go to Chick-fil-A <laughs> with, the tro- with the Larry O'Brien trophy. <laughs> so, Unreal. This is crazy. Let's just go to the video here. Giannis took some video again, morning after he wins the championship at the Chick-fil-A drive-thru. I'm going to Chick-fil-A, Phyllis. And ladies. And, and ladies. And ladies, obviously. I'm about to go order the 50-piece uh, uh, McNuggets. <laughs> 50, exactly. Okay. Not 51, none. 49. Chicken minis, yes. 50. And uh, let me have a large drink, no ice, half Sprite, half lemonade. Okay. Thank you. My pleasure. And then can I... Oh, Come back. Okay. See you guys. I'm out. 
I don't know. I, I love it, Renee. Uh, first of all, the fact that he did that, that he went to Chick-fil-A just like he was like me to spend the time with the fans. I thought that was incredible. First of all, he dropped enough 40 piece nuggets. And then when he <laughs> dropped that 50 piece nugget, he went to Chick-fil-A. But it's hilarious because he said, I'm going to Chick-fil-A to get a McNugget. Giannis, the McNuggets are at McDonald's, but I still love it all. Like, I love that the fans got in on it. I love that he said not yeah. 51. Not 49, right. but 50. A 50 piece nuggets in a game clinching, oh my gosh, championship run. I mean, that's what you do, Giannis. I better see a deal with Giannis onto the Kumpo and Chick fil A. It has to happen. Yeah, but he just he can't call them McNuggets, though. 50 piece uh, McNuggets. Welcome back to TMZ Sports. It is my favorite time of the show because it's time, Renee, to run and gun with Renee Montgomery. Let's do this. And we are going to start Let's get with... It. Let's get it, Renee. We're going to start with somebody that you know very well with your business partner, Marshawn Lynch. Beast Mode was part of the NHL's expansion draft. And he actually, I think this is really cool. He got to announce a pick for the Seattle Kraken, and I don't know. I, I love everything Marshawn does. Watch Marshawn Lynch making the pick. The Seattle Kraken select from the Asheville Predators. Marshawn, take it away. Let's see, so uh, with the f this the first pick, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, with the first pick, we're going with the boy boy Cali, though. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> yep, Cali Yarnko. Cali Yarnko. You just heard it. Cali Yarnko to the Kraken from Beast Mode himself. Thank you so much as always. Appreciate you. Hey, and look, Cali, hanging. Cali, if I didn't pronounce it right, tap in with me and, and, and let me know how to do it the right way, big dog. You heard it from him. <laughs> Straight up. You heard it from him directly. Wow. I'm telling you, everything Marshawn does is entertaining. I don't, I know. like, there's, now he's making picks. I've seen he's done an adventurous show. He's called random things he's advertising for subway like right. everything he does he puts his thing that he does on there and it's i mean it's highly entertaining i think that they should book him for more stuff if he has the time to do it i would watch i, I do to any literally anything marshawn <laughs> will do I, i'll watch so yeah boy boy from cali <laughs> And I'm in. All right, let's move to somebody who really loves their pet, uh, Tomas Nito. He is the backup catcher for the New York Mets. And uh, Tomas just wanted to do something cool to remember his puppy. Well, and, and wait, I'm saying this as if the dog has like passed away. No, the dog, Louie, is very much alive and healthy and well and happy. But Tomas got a tattoo of Louie on his leg. And I, I think. The art looks pretty good, Renee, wouldn't you say? I love it. If that's your best friend and you want right. your best friend tatted on your body, by all means, go best friend. That's my best friend. So, I look, I ain't mad at it. Right. Okay. We like it. Good. We like that, Tomas. Very cool. Uh, and lastly, <laughs> there was a little incident at Team USA practice, Renee. So, Kevin Durant, he, he knocks down a shot. And uh, Bam Adebayo, for some reason, doesn't want to give him the ball. And then this happened. Wow. Okay, well, I have to say, though, there is an unwritten rule in basketball that if you're just shooting the balls around and it's casual, yeah. if I make it, even though there's no organizational structure, if I make it, you give me the ball back. That is a real, like, people might not know that, but that's a very real yeah. rule. So if Kevin Durant did make that shot, like, I wouldn't go hound the person to get the ball back. No. I would have been like, wow, you're not going <laughs> to give me my, my change, but... Kevin Durant was like, run me my ball. And I feel like if it's Kevin Durant, even if he misses, you still <laughs> give him the ball. <laughs> Welcome back to TMZ Sports. It is my favorite time of the show because we are about to run and gun with Renee Montgomery. 
Let's do it, Renee. Uh, we are starting with the Cleveland Indians, or I should say the team formerly known as the Cleveland Indians, at least when next season rolls around. So, uh, look, lots of changes uh, across the sports landscape. Teams uh, who uh, have have names that have been deemed offensive have uh, have been changing. It's 2021. Times are different. The Cleveland Indians felt that that name didn't represent them anymore. And for the last couple of months, they have been trying to find a new name. Well, we now have it, Renee. Uh, the Cleveland Indians will, starting next season, be called the Cleveland Guardians. Mixed reaction on social media. Uh, what do you think, Renee? You like it? You don't like it? Uh, I mean, what do you well, feel? I see what they did there. When you say they, the words rhyme, so I, the, the words are very similar right. aesthetically. They sound yeah. similar. Look the same, I-A-N-S. Yeah. Yeah, so I feel like they were trying to, because, you know, there's different chants that teams do or different. Yeah. I feel like they were trying to fit themselves into the same mold so they could carry on the traditions that were there before. So I see what they were trying to do. That's what I'll say. Yeah, I, I do too. And I didn't think of that. And I think you just nailed it because the chance and the way it looks, it, it, it looks very much the same. Okay, let's move on to KD. Yesterday, we talked about Kevin Durant. He, uh, they, they weren't giving him the ball when he was knocking down his shots. Deep threes from the corner and he couldn't get the ball back, as is kind of the unwritten rule when you're putting some shots up. Anyway, Kevin Durant was trolled by his teammates, Renee. So <laughs> Kevin Durant is with his Team USA teammates. And this happened. I will explain why after Kevin Durant has the look on his face. But Team USA, take it away. Today, July 23rd, they sang happy birthday to their teammate. Awesome gesture, right? The only thing right. is Kevin Durant's birthday is September 29th. <laughs> it's two months away. I have no idea why this started or who started this, but Kevin, Durant, Kevin Durant's face during this whole thing was actually hilarious because you know that's how it works. When somebody starts singing happy birthday, I don't verify whether or not it's that no. person's actual birthday. I just join in automatically. I don't care if I'm at a restaurant, the airport, where the Olympics. I would join in too. So it's funny because of the domino effect. I'm sure some of the people actually thought it was his birthday. Yeah. I know. Did you see? There were so many people in that oh. hallway too. You know, guys, you were going to make Kevin Durant quit the team. We need Stop KD bullying on. Kevin Durant. He is a first ballot Hall of Famer. He might be the greatest offensive player ever. Chill. Take it easy on KD. All right. And our, our third run and gun topic today, there are some congratulations in order because one of our editors, Alvin, and his beautiful girlfriend, Amanda, they welcomed a little baby girl. Wow. Alma Faya Raya, five pounds, Renee, five pounds, 15 ounces. And the doctor told them that little Almafaya is going to be tall and maybe could be a basketball player. And I said, well, we have to do this on the show because I know somebody who played a little bit of basketball and might own a WNBA team now. So maybe, maybe Renee, in like 18, 19, 20 years from now, we have a new player for your squad. Y'all better be sending uh, the little the little <laughs> newborn uh, ball with TMZ on it or something. Maybe one of those stress balls with TMZ on there or something. So, that the, so she can start getting a feel for the ball and, you know, get it in her hands. Right, right. you, you never know. In 20 years, you never know.